Hello everyone, this is Frank DeMore from the End Times Research Ministry and today is February the 19th of 2015. And I've been talking quite a bit about the last days and one of the major signs of the last days, and this is really a big one, a lot of people don't even know about it because they don't read the Bible. But the Lord showed us that we were going to be living in the same conditions that Noah's generation found themselves in. And obviously, most of the people should know by now what happened in that story when Noah was told by God to build the ark because he was going to send a deluge, a flood, that would drown every living creature on the planet except for Noah and his family. And then Jesus Christ talked about this issue and let me bring this to your attention. I'm going to start here in verse 32. It says, Now learn a parable of the fig tree. And of course, if you do a study, you'll see that the fig tree is symbolic for the nation of Israel. The fig tree is symbolic for the nation of Israel. And when his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. And so, being young, the Israeli nation is a very young nation, and it's still putting forth its branches, and it is a tender, young uh, nation, just like we see in verse 32. And he says, Ye know that summer is nigh, so likewise ye, when you, so likewise ye, when ye see all these things, Know that it is near, even at the door. And Matthew chapter 24 gives us a list of all these different signs that we're going to see in one generation. And when we saw all of those signs, we would know that it is near, even at the door. What does he mean? The second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he's referring to here. Then in verse 34, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. So the generation who saw So the generation who saw the rebirth of Israel, it's still a young nation, that would be the generation who is definitely going to see the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in verse 35, and in, and in verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. But of that day and hour no man but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, now get this, as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So in the last days, what are we going to see here? We're going to see Noah's characteristics showing up in the last generation, the generation who saw the rebirth of the nation of Israel. You get the point? The Lord in this scripture, in Matthew 24, is telling us that we are that specific generation and those signs have reappeared again only in our generation just like Noah's generation and that the people of this earth the unrighteous people who did not come to the Lord Jesus Christ would end up dying now with Noah's generation it ended up dying with a flood but in our generation when you read the book of Revelation, you know that it's going to happen with judgments that are going to be poured out on an unrighteous people who refuse the free gift of salvation via the, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. And so I've been pointing out to people the different events that are taking place showing us that, yes, we are in fact heading towards the book of Revelation, the last church, the church of persecution, the church that is going to be a sought at 
and hated because of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see now the gay activists that are moving in that direction and doing whatever they can to silence the Christian church. Now, after reading these passages, one might think that it's okay to hate the gay population. No, that's not the case. Because even the Lord Jesus Christ said, pray for your enemies. So even though the gay community would hate the Christians, our job is to follow the precepts of the Lord Jesus Christ and pray for those people that hate us. We're supposed to love like Jesus Christ did. He came for the sinners. And so we could do whatever we can to show them the word of the Lord, but we're supposed to love these people. And get, let God take care of what he is going to do to anyone who decides that they're going to attack the Christian community and try to disband Christian faith. God knows what's going on. He knew what was going on at the time that Noah was building the ark. God knew the devastation that was coming. He knows about it. He wrote about it. We see it in the book of Revelation, and it's going to happen again, only this time in a different fashion. So let me now show you another one of the many, many examples that are coming out monthly showing that the gay activists are pursuing their agenda to try to wipe out faith, the Christian faith. So without a doubt, here we are in February the 19th of 2015, as you can see, the Christian way of life is very much under attack. In this article by the Red State, entitled, The Line Between Islamic Extremist and Gay Rights Extremist, gives us a good look at what is happening in the United States when it comes to fear and intimidation by the gays towards Christian belief. It says, we have another life targeted for destruction by the gay rights community. Baronelli Studsman, an evangelistic Christian, declined to provide flowers for the homosexual wedding for a longtime customer of hers. The customer was gay and, again, a longtime customer. Baronelli Studsman is now going to lose her business, her life savings, and possibly her own home for putting her faith into practice. Both her customer and the state of Oregon are taking everything she has for not bowing at the altar of sexual sin. In Denmark, France, and elsewhere, we have seen Islamic extremists take lives because of the Islamic extremist beliefs. They do not want tolerance. They do not want pluralism. And they do not want to show respect to the views of others. And they will take life for being offended. There will be no magnanimity and there will be no mercy. In taking life, the Islamic extremists want the public spectacle. They want not just revenge, but they also want to make others fear and second guess doing the same. They want to silence others and drive them from their town square. They use death and violence to do it. Gay rights activists with few exceptions like Floyd Lee Corkins and the guy in North Carolina last week have not turned physically violent, but they are intent on destroying any who disagree with them. They will take the homes, businesses, life savings, and any who defy them. And they will use the tools of the state and mob action through boycotts, fear, and intimidation to make it happen. And they will not kill, but they will threaten and scare. Someone on Twitter the other day noted that the struggle for civil rights and gay rights are not the same. You don't need a rainbow sticker on the back of your car to let people know that you are black, the person on the Twitter noted. Nonetheless, gay rights activists have decided to equate their struggle for marriage with that of the civil rights movement. They are not, however, going about it peacefully or in the same way. They are not as Martin Luther King Jr. did, urging white Christians to be better Christians. Instead, they are using the state to ruin Christians who try to practice their faith. There will be no magnanimity and there will be no mercy. There will be no going down the street to another florist, baker, or photographer. The divide between Islamic extremists and gay rights extremists is at death. The meat on the line at destruction. Baronelle Stutzman is going to lose her business, her savings, and possibly her home. 
She will be financially and publicly ruined for her Christian faith in Oregon for the same reasons Aaron and Melissa Klein and their five children will lose their home, business, and income. They would not bake a cake for a homosexual wedding. These people serve gay clients. Their faith compelled them, however, to not provide for homosexual weddings. That ceremony created the one relationship between people in life ordained by God to be between a man and a woman. In Atlanta, Georgia, for professing his faith, his chief job was to glorify God and for treating all sexual sin as sin, Atlanta's fire chief was driven from his job by gay rights activists. Anyone who defy gay rights activists are labeled bigots, unworthy of attention, jobs, or meaningful opportunities in the town square. So as you can see from this report and other previous reports like it, the Christian life is definitely under attack. Now, for those of you who have read my book, you've seen my warnings over the years to watch for the great earthquakes that Jesus Christ warned us about. Let me first give you the scripture in case you're not familiar with what the Lord said. In Luke 21, 11, it says, And great earthquakes shall be in divers places. In other words, many places. And, of course, he goes on to say that there'll be famines, pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. And in my previous books, I remember my first book that came out was 1997. And since 1997, I've been warning the people to watch for the big quakes because the closer we get to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the more we're going to see these massive quakes, these large quakes, and I'm, I'm calling the big quakes anything over 6.0. That's the ones that I normally focus in my book because that's when the rattling really gets intense. And so now the stats that came out for 2015 just begun this year. And already we've seen some big quakes. We've seen, for example, a 6.6 .6 on the 7th of January in Panama. A 6.8 in, in Vanuatu and 6.1 in the Fiji, and that took place on January the 28th. And then on January the 30th, another one, a 6.0 in Venetuyu, and 6.3 earthquake, Argentina, February the 2nd of 2015. And a huge quake, 6.9, that struck Chile, and that was on February the 11th, 2015. And a magnitude 7.1 earthquake struck in the northern mid-Atlantic ridge on February the 13th, 2015. And there was a magnitude 6.2 earthquake that struck Taiwan on February the 13th, 2015. And Taiwan has been having a lot of these aftershocks. And then another one, a 6.4 again struck Venturu, and that one took place February 19th, 2015, today. And so when you see that bottom sentence there, it says, I leave the same warning with you as Jesus left us. Earthquakes are a sign of the last days, so keep on the watch, for they are coming. And I'm going to tell you, the closer we get, the more we're going to see this in the news and I'm pretty sure that you're going to see some massive earthquakes in 2015. That has to happen because the Lord told us in Mark 13, 8, that expect these birth pangs. That's what he's talking about, the birth pangs of the last days. And as we get closer and closer, the birth pangs will get more intense. And if that's the case, you will see more of the earthquakes shaking the planet. In the scripture that I just read to you about earthquakes in Luke 21:11. There was also a reference to famines and pestilence. And now I'm going to skip over to pestilence because I've been warning you about that as well. In my book, you'll see that I've warned that they were going to be new superbugs that were going to come out in the future. I knew this would happen because we are getting close to the second coming. And if we're going to see diseases, it only stands to reason that we're going to see diseases that are going to kill people off. And that means the antibiotics that we presently have are not going to be working. And they now call these diseases superbugs. 
So let me bring you to my March 30th, the 2010 report. This is from my old site, the BibleProphecyMan.com, which is still up, but most of my posting is done at my new site, EndTimesResearchMinistry.com. And you'll even see it in a heading. I talk about superbug and disease. So let me scroll down, and you'll see it in blue. It says, Prophecy Sign. In Luke 21, 11, Christ warns us to watch for diseases in the last days. In chapter 5 of my book, I warn you to watch for new superbug diseases that doctors can't cure. So, in a warning, both from Luke 21, 11, and me taking the wisdom from what Christ has given to me, I rewarned you and let me show you an example of that warning. We're going to turn to that scare at a hospital in Los Angeles where seven people have been infected with a potentially deadly superbug, nearly 200 more at risk. ABC Cecilia Vega is in L.A. with the latest. Good morning, Cecilia. George, good morning to you. This superbug is extremely dangerous, and as you said, it can be deadly. It is already linked to two deaths here at this hospital, and now health officials say they don't want to see it spread anywhere in this community. This morning, nearly 180 patients treated at UCLA's Ronald Reagan Medical Center warned they may have been exposed to a potentially deadly bacteria. It's a very potent, virulent organism that can cause, you know, death. In a statement overnight, the hospital revealing seven patients have tested positive so far, and they say an internal investigation found the outbreak may have been a contributing factor in two deaths. The drug-resistant superbug known as CRE likely transmitted to patients by contaminated medical scopes. If it's uh, not cleaned out, quote-unquote, cleaned out appropriately, then, then it can spread from one person to another. UCLA saying it sterilized the scopes according to the manufacturer, but that it is now using a decontamination process that goes above and beyond the manufacturer and national standards. The new fear, more confirmed cases of a bacteria that by some estimates can kill half of those infected. A similar outbreak from contaminated medical scopes infected more than 30 people in Seattle from 2012 to 2014. Other confirmed superbug cases in cities like Pittsburgh and Chicago. In Los Angeles, federal, state, and local health officials are now investigating, sending out warning letters to those potentially at risk. Those letters offering patients a free at-home testing kit to determine whether they are infected. Now, those patients who are at risk would have been exposed here between October and January. George, so many questions out here this morning about how this could have happened. And let's get some answers now from Dr. Richard Besser. Thanks, to see you very much. You know, Rich, you hear this word superbug sounds so scary. What do we need to know about it? Well, it is very concerning. This isn't the first outbreak that's linked to, to a scope. CRE is one of the worst bugs that we know about because the, you're almost running out of antibiotics. But a couple points people need to know. Many people can have this in their body and it won't cause any problem. But you need to identify those people, one, because they could get infected, but also if they come into the hospital, and most of these people are in the hospital a lot, you have to use strict contact precautions so they don't spread it to other people. I'm so surprised to see that these scopes can, can transmit it even though they've been sterilized. Well, one of, the, one of the things about this, as they've looked, in many of these outbreaks, they can't find a breakdown in any of those cleaning procedures. So there's something going on here, you know, whether they have to change the procedures or not. But there's a reason that scopes are, are spreading this in hospitals.